What's going on, America? This is Kevin in Kevin's Corner, where I try to make some sense out of nonsense. First of all, in my own life, but then sometimes in other people's lives. When whatever nonsense they're talking about starts to leak out of them, and it starts to spread like a virus, and then other people start catching nonsense, and they be like, dude, I was over so-and-so's house, man, came down with the nonsense, and now I'm talking crazy, you know? And when I see nonsense spreading, I gotta try to use the antidote to this nonsense, which is some, some practicality, some logic, some reasoning. And somebody sent me, I guess, a post from somebody that was going off on a rant about Donald Trump and all of his horrific racism. And normally I don't respond, <clears throat> because people will send me stuff via Facebook, Twitter, but this guy, he's polite. I interact with him. I can tell he's not a Trump supporter. Um, and he throws little things out there sometimes. Just, you know, drop it in my head like, now can you see why, you know, people don't support Trump? And I'm like, huh, okay. Well, he sent me something recently where I said, you know what? I got to talk about this one because, uh, you know, this type of nonsense that can become contagious. So this man, and I, I don't call people's names out. So, you know, don't don't sit in the bottom. Who said that? Well, anyway, this guy. Um, he goes off and he starts talking. Now, you know, he warms it. Let me give you the warm up. And also, let me just let you know up front. It's going to he going to say some some things that aren't seemly. OK, he says, I watched the Roseanne show a few times. Politically, the show itself was fine. It posed itself as an exploration of working class concerns and values. And it was I'm like, OK, well, I mean, you know, start off. OK, then he says the Roseanne character support for Trump was portrayed in exactly the terms any Trump supporter would portray themselves and their support for Trump. Really? Well, that's news for me. That's that's news to me. See, because see, I'm a Trump supporter and I, I can't really relate to the Roseanne character. That wasn't my upbringing, but hey, I'm just saying. All right. So now we're getting into the, the field of speculation, <coughs> the field of assumption. OK, then he goes on to say, all right, y'all ready for this? He says she wanted someone that would shake up the system. He was going to bring back jobs, etc. Race didn't enter into it, of course. And now the real life Roseanne has said something racist, which surprises none of us. Because no matter how many excuses Trump supporters create, we all know effing well that if you support Trump, you're an effing racist. Now, Let's break this down just up to this point. First things first, he goes right into the whole liberal, progressive, snowflake playbook of let me start to cuss at you and call you a bunch of names and put you in a box because I can't defend my argument with logic and reason and everything coming out of my mouth is emotional and everything is, is from a, a, a talking point that I heard and, and, and because I'm louder than you and I'm more vulgar, that trumps your your calmness. It trumps your your practical, logical argument. It trumps all of that. See? See? So when I cuss and when I get loud, that means it, it, it means more. It's more impacting to you guys because of how upset I am. See? Yeah. You can't even. No, no, you can't even debate me. You can't argue back because guess what? You're a racist, okay? So, <clears throat> he goes on to say that every Trump supporter is an effing racist. Now, the second part of this is this. When you use a term like racist, okay? When you call somebody something and leave no room to deviate from that definition, that is an absolute, okay? That means there's no exception to the rule. I did the scientific experiment and I've come to the conclusion that you are 100% uncut, pure racist. That means anything that deviates from my definition of racism blows up my theory, right? I can't sit back and say, you know what? That's grass. But sometimes it's not grass. Sometimes it's a straw. Sometimes it's a leaf. I can't say, you know what? That's a car. But sometimes, you know, it's a motorcycle. If I say something is what it is, that means I have examined it and I'm able to conclude that this is 100% <coughs> what it is. So he says that all Trump supporters are effing racist. All right. So there's no deviation 
from that plan. Then he goes on to say, I don't give a blank why you say you voted for him, why you think you voted for him. You're an effing racist. Donald Trump has said and done far too much, too often, too hatefully to pretend any excuse. And his followers, likewise, um, it's way beyond shutting your ears to an occasional awkwardness from your grandpa, and it always was. In order to support Trump, you had to believe somewhere in your core that the white supremacists we live under, and more disturbingly, that we've lived under for 50 years ago is okay, necessarily right. Now, now check this out. First thing first, let's back up a touch. Let's back up just a little bit. <sighs> he said, all Trump supporters, everybody who voted for him, okay, are racist. Now, what that mean? That mean I'm a racist. That mean I don't like black people. I don't like Chinese, Mexicans, even though I go out and I dance salsa with all these people from other countries and different races. I don't really like them. I tolerate them. I hate them, y'all. What this man is trying to say defies all logic and reasoning. And this is why I have a hard time debating and talking to people like this, okay? Because, see, now what he's trying to make me think, he's trying to say, hey, common sense, I want you to sit back and just go to sleep and then let this emotion come and kick in so that you can convince this human that even though over almost half of America voted for Donald Trump, you're telling me that all of them we're racist. You're telling me that because if that's the case, we in worse trouble than I thought. If that is the if if 47 percent, 44 percent or however many percent of Americans, I'm talking about people who voted for Barack Obama twice, but then voted for Trump. All of a sudden now they just switched over. Remember, he called everybody racist. There's no deviation from that. That was an absolute statement. If you voted for Trump, you are a racist. So now you can't flip the script. How would you explain these people voting for Barack Obama? Because they're 100% racist. How would you explain all of the minorities that voted for Trump? The Latinos and the blacks and the Mexicans and the, and the, and the, 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 the Asians and all of them. All of them. Racist. No other excuse. No other option. That's what you are. But it goes even further than that. You see, I like to bring some reasoning to the argument. See, I ain't got to cuss and, and call him a bunch of names to destroy this type of silliness, all right? But it goes deeper than that because it shows that this human was a victim of manipulation. First things first, the man says he, we're living under white supremacy. And I'm thinking to myself, first of all, according to the picture, he doesn't even look black. He looks something else, but nonetheless, whatever he is, you can't tell me nothing about white supremacy. I'm probably older than this dude. So I'm on the tail end of real racism. And even me, I can't say, man, I ain't never get to do nothing I want to do. Everything I tried to do was blocked by the man. White supremacy, man, that's what they did. They held me down because I'm brown. Yeah, that's why I ain't make it in life. I can't say that. In fact, what I can say is there were a lot of white people in my life that came across my life and they had positions to be able to uh, help me out, and they did. There's a lot of white people in my life who opened up some doors for me. You mean to tell me that they were white supremacists looking for an opportunity to say, hey, any black guy looking to come up, our job is to step on them and make sure we keep them down. You know, and I'm going, I don't see that. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen somewhere, but according to this man, this is an all out epidemic, according to CNN, MSNBC, the liberal Democrats, a lot of progressives, white supremacy is just dominating everybody. And that gives every minority that don't want to do what they're supposed to do, don't want to work hard, an excuse to be sorry. And you know what? I'm not going to let you be sorry. All right. That's why I'm telling you this on this video. I ain't going to let you be sorry. Because if people don't tell you the truth, most people will revert back to their default mode of, I'm going to take the easy way out and be sorry. I'm going to use all these excuses that this man is saying for me being sorry. And with the Democrats always telling me when they come into our neighborhood during election time <coughs> and they say, it ain't your fault. 
It's the it's the the conservatives. It's the Democrats. It's the system. It's white supremacy. It's white privilege. It's all of these things false, except for you. Uh huh. Yeah. But I got news for you. You're the sum total of your own choices. All right. And so unless people can give me specific applications where they say, man, this was un uncut racism and white supremacy there's no mistaking it i mean this person held me back on the basis of him being a white supremacist and me being a black man or a minority but this man makes that statement but then let's go one step further with the logic okay he says because of all the things donald trump has done and said okay all of them i want to know what they are See, now you're falling into the category of what the Democrats be saying about the Russia collusion thing when they say stuff like, you know, it was the Russians. He colluded with the Russians. What Russians? Name one. OK, give me some examples of what you're saying. Donald Trump said and what he's done. And then let me debate you on that, because the bottom line is I've heard all the talking points that the, the Democrats put out and that the liberal media put out. And I also know their goal and objective to distort the truth and manipulate minds like this person. OK, yeah. See, and I guarantee you, just like the other day, I bet you there's some people who never followed up on the comment about the animals. And they probably still think Donald Trump called all uh, immigrants animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't think the media has something to do with that narrative being formed? There's some people right now who probably running around saying Donald Trump locked up little babies and put them in cages and ripped babies out of the mother's arms of illegal immigrants. And he lost fifteen hundred kids. You don't think people are going to remember that false narrative? Only people who got common sense and the desire to know truth. They're going to say they lied. They're manipulating you. They're trying to create an image in your mind. So that you will say, this dude is, he's evil. He's a racist. He's this and that. And so now you're telling me there's no deviation from this. When you deemed him to be a racist, 100% uncut, then how will it explain the fact that he helped Jennifer uh, Hudson out when her family got killed? Put them up in a hotel. That breaks the whole racism theory. I mean, he should never be able to deviate from being a hardcore racist. He should have been looking at her like, that's her problem. I'm sorry, I wish she would have been a victim, you know, but... How do you explain it? If he was 100% racist, why would he why would he pardon Jack Johnson? He didn't have to do that. Why would he bring two black boys home from from China that he could have left over there? Why would he bring the 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 two American uh South Koreans back here to the United States if he's just 100% uncut racist? See, these are deviations from that term, from that definition. See, let me tell you something. Real racists don't do that stuff. Real racists don't ever hang out with people like Don King, people like George Foreman, people like Russell Simmons. Real racists don't do that. Real racists don't even bring Ben Carson in. He, don't, he wouldn't have been hanging with Omarosa. He wouldn't be hanging with the pastor up in Cleveland. He wouldn't be doing none of that if he was a 100% uncut racist. But then let me drop one more piece of logic to this argument. You're telling me now. See, this is where common sense come in. You're telling me suspended, you know, and I can't do that. I can't do that for you, okay? All right? I'm telling you, whoever this guy is, this because I, I love you enough to tell it to your face. You're telling me that for 40 years, this man has been in the public's eye, hanging out with all of these people interviewing him, hanging out with all of these politicians that he had to lace their pockets, Hillary, Bill, going to weddings, dinners, all of this stuff, getting interviewed by Oprah. She loved him, asked him if he was ever going to run for president. And not once, nobody ever heard him slip out a racist comment, sitting there at dinner with Hillary and them like, hey, man, look at the moolie over there busting the tables. Hey, hey, man, check out all those spigs over there. Hey, look, you see the kite that just came in? Nobody picked up on this. He must be the greatest actor of all times. Trump should have won an Oscar to be able to go 70-something years without nobody just saying, man, this dude, I was hanging with Trump the other day, and he called a group of black dudes the N-word. I was offended. But yet nobody came out and said, I heard Trump say this, okay? But you're telling me now, he waits till 70, suppressed it all. Get down, stay down, racist. Don't leak it out until I become president. Uh -uh, we got to hold on. And then as soon as he became president, ah, 
Whew. Now I can let all this racism out. Woo! Now I can let all of this nationalism out. You know what I'm saying? I can just straight up be a Ku Klux Klan member now. Woo! Now that I'm in the White House, I'm gonna go ahead and unleash my diabolical scheme. That is almost as ridiculous as them trying to convince us that he waited 71 years to now become a Russian spy and agent. See, I want you to think about this, man, whoever you are, okay? It doesn't make sense. And you're trying to make sense out of nonsense, but you can't do it. You're making arguments that's all emotional. They're getting you to focus on this stuff right here because the other day I asked somebody, hey, if Trump is so bad, what has happened to you in your life? What has happened since he became president, huh? How has it impacted you negatively? And the person had nothing to say, but yet life is bad in America. Man, it's horrible here, man. Trump messing up everything. How? What did he do to you? How has your life impacted personally? I, it's, it's bad, though, for real, man. Hey, you, you know what? I can't really say. But, hey, man, this dude, he, he divisive. How? You know who's really divisive? The people who create these false narratives, like the ones that they've been trying to create the last couple weeks that, oh, he hates all the immigrants and he's killing babies and ripping them from the mother's arms and he he's calling all the Mexicans animals and Honduras animals. Those are the people who are setting y'all up for the okie doke because when you watch that garbage and you say, yeah, Trump is like that, then what happens is you go out on the streets and leak it out and write it and stuff like this, and now all of a sudden, the, the country becomes divided. Hmm? That's what happens. You start to pass on a lack of common sense. You start to pass on nonsense. You done caught it, and you want everybody else to have it. So now you're going around coughing up all of your ignorance and vomit on everybody else. Hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> and they're like, hey, man, what the heck? Hey, man, Trump's a racist, man. Trump, why am I saying this? Man, Trump, man, that dude, he, he's, a, he's a sexist, even though he, he, he hired all kind of women and it don't make no sense. But something's in me just making me keep saying stuff that don't make no sense. But I just got to say it. That's what you sound like. When you write stuff like this and st don't stop to say, you know what, that doesn't make any common sense. I'm not even going to go through the rest of this because the rest of it simply does nothing more than continue to accuse everybody who supported Trump of being a racist. Everybody. That doesn't even make logical sense. Forty something percent of America are nothing more than racist. And it has nothing to do with you being white, upper class, man, woman, none of that. What you're telling me is everybody that supported Trump is a racist. Now you sound crazy. Now you sound ridiculous to make a statement like that and then try to blame Donald Trump for Roseanne's ignorance. That's all Roseanne. Donald Trump is not a mind controller. He doesn't get in people's head and say, I'm going to make you say this. I'm going to make you do that. Okay. What does do that, though, is the dirty, funky, nasty, dumb Democrats. Because when I hear people say stuff like this straight from the Democratic playbook and they don't think independently, I'm going, now that's mind control. When I hear them regurgitating talking points from the funky, nasty liberal media, I'm going, that's mind control. When you sit back and present a practical, logical argument and people will suspend their logic and say, I don't care if it do make sense. I don't care if it is benefiting me. Man, that dude, he ain't the man I'm telling you. And I'm going, see now? You've been mind controlled. That's the real mind control that's going on. When I see people saying, I'm going to go down and march to give up my own rights, my guns, I'm going, that's mind control. <coughs> so I, I couldn't let it go. I'm going to try to, I had to keep this video short. I couldn't even get to the rest of it, y'all. I started losing my voice. I hope nonsense ain't trying to creep down my throat because <clears throat> it's all over right now. Spit it up and take it. I'm going to go and take a pill of logic and reasoning so I can cure myself of this nonsense that's going around. You've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. I got to keep it real, man. It's just the way I am. All right. Check me out on Facebook, on Twitter. Check me out um, Wednesday nights. I'm going to be talking about some stuff tonight. I might even bring this up. All right. And so check me out. The link will be in the bottom. You can listen in. You can call in. You can chat with me. Um, I'm going to have a guest on my show. Good friend of mine. We're going to be hamming it up and we'd love to have anybody call in and be a part of it. Um, and also, 
If you want to support Kevin's Corner, there's links in the bottom to do so. And stay away from that nonsense, y'all. I'm telling y'all, when y'all see people come around and they start opening their mouth, you can tell in the first couple seconds when they open up their mouth, you're like, uh uh, uh. I smell some nonsense. All right. God bless you. God bless America. Talk to you soon in Kevin's Corner.